All right, then, gang. So we've learned a few different TypeScript features now, which hopefully you can see the benefits from already. And now I want to introduce you to another TypeScript feature called union types. And union types are a way for us to let TypeScript know that a particular variable or value somewhere can be one of several different types. For example, I might have an ID variable, which I'm just going to call, I don't know, some ID for now. And I know that that ID could either be a number type or a string type in the future, right? It could be one of those two things. So I could make a union type to describe that or to declare that. And the way we do it is by adding our colon as usual, and then saying number, and then a pipe symbol, which means or, and then string. And this right here is known as a union type, where we're saying that this variable can either hold now a number or a string. So now if I come down here, I can say some ID and set it equal to an actual value, which is a number one, and that would be fine. Or I could say some ID is equal to a string, which might be two. That would be fine because it could be either a number or a string. All right then, so let's do another example. I'm gonna say let email be either a string or null. So I want you to imagine that maybe we have some kind of application where a user logs in and we have this property, which is the user's email. And that might only have a value of a string when the user's logged in, otherwise it could be null. So this is a case where we might use a union type. So I could set it to be null originally, that's the initial value, but I could change it when a user logs in maybe to have a value. So I could say email is now equal to Mario, if we can spell it that is, Mario at net ninja dev and that would be fine. And then if they log out, I could reset it back to null because it could be one of these two types. Awesome. So now let's create an actual type. So we saw type aliases in the last video and that's what I'm creating here, a type alias of ID. And I'm saying that that could either be a number or a string because typically IDs might be a number or they could be some random string like this, this kind of thing, right? So, that's what an ID is, this type alias right here. And it's just a quick way now of saying whenever we have an ID, just use this type alias instead of writing out this union type over and over. So let me come down here and say, let another ID be of type ID, right? And then below that, I can say another ID is equal to some kind of string. So some long ass string like that, and that would be fine. I can say another ID is equal to five, a number, that would be fine. Awesome. So these union types are pretty useful and quite flexible when a value can be one of a number of different types, but there is a little pitfall that you have to watch out for. So let me just come down here and I'm gonna uncomment all of this stuff right here. So I've got a function here called swap ID type, right? And it takes in an argument ID, which might be a number or a string, because remember, we just created that type alias, all right? And it returns either a number or a string. So what we intend to do inside this function is if they pass in a string, then we'll change it to a number. If they pass in a number, then we'll change it to a string. Now imagine I pass in swap ID type, let me just write this out, pass in a number, right? Now, how do I know inside this function that I passed in a number? Well, I don't because ID right here inside this function can either be a number or a string. So if I try to say something like pass, in fact, if we take this in as a string, so five, if I try to say pass int and then pass in the ID right here, then I get an error. Now we should be able to do that with a string. If I pass in five as a string right here, it's gonna pass that into an integer and we'll get back the number. But because TypeScript doesn't know that this is definitely a string right here, then we're not allowed to do that, all right? So when we pass in a union type into a function, we can only use props and methods which are common to both of those types. Now pass int, we can't use on an actual integer. That just doesn't make sense. So because it's not common to both of those types, number and string, we can't use it, okay? So there is a way around this using type guards, and we're gonna talk about that in the next lesson.